which comes from marijuana. Crack. All have parent structures exactly like a large part of the melanin molecule. Now, I thought that was very interesting, that the basic core structure of these street drugs have the basic core structure of the melanin molecule. So it has always been noted that when a melanin recessive individual and a melanin dominant individual were detoxing from the use of these drugs, the melanin dominant individual had a tremendously much more difficult time in doing so. Well, now we know the reason. Because when this substance is put into the body, it is not just put into the body and excreted through the urine and through the lungs and liver. It actually binds to your melanin. And depending upon what you're eating or what you're not eating, can bind to it for life. Fine. That means then that our detox programs have to have some different features in them for melanin dominant individuals to be able to detoxify from these substances. When you ask what is the program that our detoxification or drug rehab programs have to break these substances off the melanin molecule, what is their response to you? They look at you like you're crazy. They don't know what you're talking about. It has been identified that we secrete melanin on a 24-hour basis, and that based upon our activity, what we've eaten, the concentration can go up or down, and also based upon our health. If you happen to get a urine sample tested for particular drugs that I've named, because the melanin molecule and that drug have the same parent structure, you probably will test positive. Isn't that interesting? So we wonder how many people have been incarcerated because they've been accused of breaking their probation or fired from their job because they've been accused of using drugs when they were only excreting a normal byproduct of their body. And last but not least, in all this extensive research, it has been identified that the AIDS virus will not grow in the presence of melanin. And that as they have taken these culture plates and streaked them with melanin, the AIDS virus cannot be cultured on those plates. AIDS and melanin do not go together. And as a matter of fact, in these books that I have back here, that's one of the new research drugs that they're going to use to cure AIDS is a form of melanin. So now what does that say about supposedly the African people that have melanin? Do they have it or don't they have it? Or has something happened to their melanin molecule that no longer stimulates their immune system? Because there's a direct relationship between the health of your melanin and your immune system. Those races that have little melanin or do not have what we call pheomelanin, your melanin, excuse me, have immune system disease problems much more frequently. So now this goes into what I call a sociopathic reaction about melanin because we have found that individuals who have issues with melanin, because they are not able to utilize the molecule openly and receptively, their thoughts create chemicals from the brain that actually deactivate the molecule. Now that was really profound. So I will say that again, I want you to clearly understand that. That those individuals who have issues about having melanin, that is that in our cultural society as Africans, there are cliches, there are statements about being too black, about having too nappy a hair, about having a nose that's too wide, etc. when those type statements are made, the brain will secrete a substance that will begin to attack the aspect of yourself that you are having issues with. And will render that aspect, if this is done on a long-term basis, inactive, or bring about its destruction. So as far as I'm concerned, that's what then let me know why Africans have AIDS. Because it should be impossible otherwise.
But there's, there's an issue at all that any aspect of your body is a deficit for you or that it basically does not serve you well, that it can't function for you by your own thoughts. So I bring this information to you because I want you to begin to recognize that the substance that you have in your body that's not just responsible for hair color, for eye color, et cetera, is an intricate part of your being that has particular attributes, talents, receptivity that based upon your perception of what you know about it and how you use it can allow you to have total access to anything in the universe or totally be responsible for you creating your own demise. Because obviously if you have this and it's necessary for immune function, it's necessary for you to have a functional circulatory system so that you can heal at the rate that you are traumatized by the environment, which gives you the gift of not having to age, etc. and this is rejected, then all the things that are really not even your destiny, you must have not for any other reason other than because of how you think. Thank you. Are there any questions? If there are questions, yeah, you want to come up to the front. I think we only have one microphone, but we'd like to get that on the mic. Uh huh. You want to line up if you have questions? Yeah. Please. Yeah, we're recording this, so we like the questions on tape for further educational purposes. on video, so you have to look that way. Okay. I have um, two questions. The first question is, I'm a computer programmer, and I'm in front of a computer all day. Is there anything I can do to protect myself? You were talking about being exposed to radiation on a daily basis. I work on a computer every day, and how it affects um, the birth of your child. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Unfortunately, I've seen children born with uh, cerebral palsy and some other non-specific neurologic defects uh, of women who worked around microwave and computers. So uh, what I recommend is that you insist that there be a lead screen put on the front of the computer and that also the computer be tested every quarter for the amount of radiation that is given off. Okay. Thirdly, there are substances that you can take that are very high in superoxide dismutase, SOD, which actually removes free radicals from the bloodstream. Okay, what happens is that when you are exposed to something that creates a toxic reaction, it creates a substance known as a free radical. And it's the responsibility for the liver to neutralize it. If these free radicals are in excess, then your body needs help. And so there's a substance by the name of Suncarella A granules. It's a little plant that lives in the sea. It's the same thing that whales eat. That you can take on a daily basis that will get that out of your body. Yeah, Sun Corella. And as a matter of fact, Sun Corella is so awesome. Some people might say, well, that's all she recommends is Sun Corella. Well, why is it that that's all I recommend as opposed to another, a lot of hodgepodges that are made up of herbs? Sun Corella was the plant that was used by the Japanese to heal themselves of radiation sickness and radiation burns after the bombs were dropped upon them in heat. Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki. So you have to understand that within 40 years time, if you can find a food that totally regenerates your genetic structure and totally heals your tissues from all the free radicals and everything else so that you can actually then now come over to another country and take over its economic system in a matter of 40 years, then you need to be taking that on a daily basis. So that's why I recommend it. So they went to the sea, they understood the minerals and they understood the chlorophyll molecule, the chlorophyll molecule is the first cousin to melanin. They look exactly the same almost, except they have a different core element in the center. So that's very important. That's why dark green leafy vegetables are